I thought it was funny when you said, oh, out of our league. I'm like, oh, Justin, limiting belief. <laughs> yeah, right. I should, know, I should know better than that, right? <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, yes, Michelle's been working with us through limiting beliefs and mindset mm-hmm. and coaching and our business and kind of the restructuring of our business now. And a lot of other things too over the last year and a half. So we won't open up our brain. We're going to open up Michelle's brain today, but we'll see where it goes. Who knows? It's kind of funny. Like a lot of times when we do our coaching sessions, so the way our coaching program is structured, we do have, we have one-on-one time with Michelle and there's always like a pre-coaching form. And sometimes I'll fill it out and sometimes I don't. And it's not a laziness. Like I know a lot of people are like, I actually deliberately fill it out or I deliberately don't because a lot of times it's like, I just, I don't know. And it's one of those things where it's like, I used to get stressed about it. Like after, and then go into suffering. Yeah, go into suffering. I got to fill this thing out. She wants me to fill this thing out, but I don't want to fill out. I don't know what I want to cover. And then I just realized after a while, I'm like, whatever happens always happens right. And for some reason, whenever we get into a conversation with Michelle, mm-hmm. a lot of times it's like, and she's been saying, so what do you want to cover today? And we'll be like, you know, I, I don't know. It's been a fantastic month. Like, I don't know. And we'll walk out of that conversation with like one of our best conversations. Mm-hmm. Right. So I think that's obviously a credit to you as a coach being able to pull stuff out of us, um, but also just a credit to the work and the information that we, we share. It's also a credit to you though, because you're coachable, both of you. So mm-hmm. you're willing to look at things from different mm-hmm. angles and you're willing to be coached and, and ask questions of. There's yeah. a difference between showing up like open, coachable, ready to take action. And I don't know. That's a really good point. That's a good right? point. I'll pat myself on the back for that one. Yeah, there you <laughs> go. You, 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 you pat me, I'll pat you. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I thought where we would start because it's, I mean, it's interesting, right? We're like, Michelle even asked me, what do you want to talk about? Because like she's built up this really successful accounting business. She had a coaching business. She's a coach in David Bayer's business. It's like, where can we go with this? And I was like, well. She she loves crystals. Yeah. I, I, want, I, want, I, want to like, I want to like get backstory here and maybe even learn some things that we, we don't know. Mm-hmm. So like we want to kind of start with you and like – where this whole thing started. Cause it's like, okay, I'm this accountant numbers person. Like how do you combine a numbers geek with, I love spirituality and I love crystals and I love numerology. Like it's just a fascinating combination. So who is Michelle? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's funny. I joke with David Bear all the time that we decided that I should have been a numerologist, not an accountant. You know, I've always kind of had a real good connection to a spirituality, not a, a religion based, but like a belief that there was a, there was some kind of higher power, something else out there mm-hmm. besides me and what I saw in front of me. I didn't really understand it. You know, I love the idea of like crystals and, and nature and earth energy and stars and all that kind of stuff. And I was really, really good with numbers. So when I was coming out of high school, counselor was kind of like well what are you going to do I don't know (laughs) right like you do in grade 12 you're like I don't know like you want me to make a decision for the rest of my life (laughs) and (laughs) and so they kind of put me on the kind of accounting path through university so I realized that you know I did some work experience practicum internship in accounting offices and realized that that was not my jam. I do not want to sit at a desk with piles of paper. I never worked in an accounting office. I always worked in some kind of strategic business growth area in analysis, right? So different industries like, you know, travel industry, like tourism, architecture, food and beverage. You know, I moved around different sectors and, you know, I live in Canada. I went over to Europe and worked there for a while. And uh, when I came back to Canada, I had my kids and my husband. And so went and got a job, right? Because that's what you do. Mm-hmm. And was assistant CFO for a mill. And that burnt me out. It was like so, it was so intense, right? And it's really, um, it was a mill. So it was, I was like me and 300 men. <laughs> so really hard energetically in that environment. And so um, I ended up kind of crashing and burning in that kind of situation and uh, decided that I was going to open up my own business. So I wanted something fun. So I thought I'd open up a little store. Well, that's hard to do. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> um, I thought it'd be a lot of fun. It was actually a ton of work. Mm-hmm. And I realized the gift in that was that it has so supported me in being able to coach people 
entrepreneurs, small business yeah. owners, right? Mm -hmm. Because I know the struggle and like the struggle is real. When you have yeah. a cost of goods sold, you have a brick and mortar, like it's not just like, you know, you hang your shingle out and everybody comes flocking to you, right? So that lasted about three years and then I decided to close it because I just, it was just too much, too much pressure, too much of me. I was like tied to this store. And so I started um, just helping out friends who had businesses with bookkeeping and accounting. And that was really natural fit. That kind of mushroomed into what I have now, which is alchemy, accounting, and bookkeeping. And I think the difference for us that I can see is that I'm not an accountant. I'm not the stuffy kind of old school accountant. I am at the heart. I'm a coach. So I'm able to meet people in a different place in regards to their financials and ask them different questions than an accountant mm -hmm. will ask them. Now, I've built an amazing team of, you know, accountants and bookkeepers, so they <laughs> can do that part, right? right. Yeah. And then, you know, really, you know, I joined David Bear's program to grow my own business, to grow a coaching business, because I realized I don't like this. And that was great. And then when he asked me to come work for him, I was like, oh, well, this is the next evolution of me in the coaching business. So the accounting business really was set up to pretty much run itself, right? And, and it, you know, ticked over on its own, pretty well supported by the team. And, and I could really spend the last two years growing as a coach and really diving into the mindset of a business owner, mm -hmm. like the mindset of an entrepreneur, what it takes to be successful and not from a place of like, kind of like the hustle and grind, mm -hmm. you know, but also not from a place of like law of attraction. I'm going to sit there and wait for it to like land mm -hmm. in my lap either. Right. right. It's this kind of in between place that I feel. David asked me recently, what do you feel is the most successful people that you coach? What do you feel it is? And I used you guys as an example, actually. I said, it's the expansion of your capacity, what's possible for you, and at the same time, the ability to implement and take action. And when you have those two things, it's like time means nothing. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's pretty cool. Right. I mean, to be, to be having a, a, an accountant bookkeeper, that's the business. Mm -hmm. Like I think a, a business comes to you for this, but what they get instead is like a, a business coach. Cause like people come, Oh, I need my books done. I make sure I don't screw it up. And the government doesn't take my money, put me in jail. We got to get that stuff out of the way, but okay, now let's look at your business and what can yeah. we do with your business to take it to the next level. So that's pretty neat. We have the successful accounting business, bookkeeping business, and that, and you've always been into mindset stuff, but like this introduction to to David Bayer, who you've mentioned a couple of times, and people know who David Bayer is who listen to our podcast. Mm -hmm. They know uh, David Bayer coach, and they know I'm a David Bayer certified coach, and uh, I work with you. So they, they're all familiar. People who listen to us on the on the, on the regular are familiar. But right. your story is just there's so it's many so good, good stories. Like our story was really fun, was like serendipitous and kind of yes. cool, um, and how and I feel like all the stories are that way but yours is hilarious. So I feel like we just need to tell it as an introduction into some, maybe some mindset direction uh, that we're going to go today. Yeah, absolutely. Like my story of, of meeting David. Yeah. yeah. And the, 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 you know, the, the yeah. backyard and all that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I, it's kind of funny. It didn't start off funny. This shift originated with me being in Las Vegas during the Las Vegas shooting. Mm -hmm. And I was at an entrepreneurial event, got caught up in the shooting there it sent me into almost a PTSD response where I became unnecessarily stressed by things. And even the thought of going to the United States seemed like I was going into like a war zone in my head. So a friend of mine recognized that um, she's an amazing coach and she was like, you know what, like she helped me get through some of that, but you need to get back to the States. You need to get on a plane and you need to see that this isn't going to happen again. Like what you experienced doesn't happen all the time. And she was speaking at an event in Arizona. And so she's like, come on, come to this event. And she's a very woo-woo kind of person, right? So I'm thinking, okay, you know what? I should go. I should go go to this event. I'll watch her speak. It'll, it won't be intense. It'll be all like the hippie woo-woo people. It'll be fine, right? So it's supposed to be at the Scottsdale 
really fancy resort, right? Like six star kind of thing, right? <laughs> well, I get there and they're like, oh, like I'm staying there. And they're kind of like, oh, well, that event is has been moved to an off-site venue. And I'm thinking, what? <laughs> what do you mean? Right? So I don't know. There's some problems between the event organizer and the hotel, and they didn't sell as many tickets. Like Lewis House was supposed to headline this event. So I'm oh, thinking, wow. I'm going to go like hang out with Lewis House. That's yeah. freaking cool, right? Yeah. Right. So <laughs> I'm like, okay, so, you know, get a, a Uber to this event and he pulls up and it's a house, like a really nice house, but it's a house. And I'm thinking, what is going on? Right? <laughs> Where are you taking me? <laughs> all right. So my friend and I, we get out and we go in and, you know, there's all these kind of people with crystals and essential oils and sage. And you got to go through the, like the gauntlet kind of thing of oil and all this stuff. Right. And I see this like, piece of cardboard that has the lineup of speakers for the day and i'm like what has happened to this event right no lewis house on that cardboard. no <laughs> no there's no lewis house on the cardboard right and so as i'm like looking at this lineup of speakers i'm not recognizing anybody on it but my friend and then i see like this giant man come <laughs> through the gate with this like fiery latin lady who's like kind of like yelling at everybody right <laughs> and i'm like oh god what's going on there right so i kind of walk in or whatever and i'm thinking okay, this is like a really nice mansion. It has a pool and a casita and they've got this like area that's got like a tent, but it's definitely not the event that I thought it was going to be where Lewis House is going to be speaking. And so I go sit down in this backyard in like a, you know, like a normal chair and I'm sitting in the sun and I'm thinking, okay, well, just relax, you know, breathe. It's all going to be fine. And I see this really tall guy and he's sitting like kind of across from me. And at the same time, we both notice this giant tortoise <laughs> that is like bumbling through the yard. Like this thing's <laughs> huge, right? And it's like getting all like caught up in like wires and it's bumping into the tent. And I look at the tortoise and I look at David, you know, I learned that that was David Bear. And then I look back at the tortoise and I look at him and he literally puts his head in his hands <laughs> and he looks like he's crying, right? And I'm thinking, this is not good. Like, <laughs> what has just happened, right? And then I, I kind of overhear him say to Carol, I learned that that was his wife, Carol, I can't do this. Like, I, I can't do this. This is crazy. And she was like, no, there is maybe one person here that needs to hear your message. And so you're going to get up there and you're going to talk and you're going to speak and you're going to serve the shit out of these people because that's what you do. And he was like, there isn't one person here. And she's like, there is. There's got to be one person. There's a reason that we're here. This is his path trying to build his business yeah. out on the speaking circuit. Yeah, yeah, totally, right? What I learned later was that this was like he had been on the road for three weeks in a series of events that had fallen apart. Oh, I didn't know oh. that. Yeah, and so this was like the last stop on this road trip of disaster kind of thing, right? And for him, it was really difficult, right? Mm -hmm. It was like... I was supposed to be at like the Hyatt or something and I'm in somebody's backyard, right? Yeah. So he gets up there to speak and he's using like a barbecue as a podium. Like it was ridiculous, right? And people are not listening. They're getting up and walking away. Like they don't even know what this guy is talking about. But for me, it was like the most crystal clear. It was like he was talking straight into my brain. And I was like, this is the guy. Because if I back it up to that event in um, Vegas, when I was listening to these speakers, I had turned to my friend and I had said, I know all of this. I know everything that I could be up there teaching this. This is stupid. I don't even know why I'm here. And I realized I had gotten to the, like, the upper limit of where I was at right, with the coaching that I had invested in. And I needed something different. 
So at the time, I thought I needed somebody like Tony Robbins or, you know, something like that, right, to really mm -hmm. take me to that next level. And so when I heard David speak, I, it was just like, like all the fireworks were going off, mm -hmm. right? So that started my journey of working with him. And then, you know, a year and a half into working with him, he asked me to come work for him. And here I am. And here you are with us. Yeah. yeah. The way the dots all connect up is pretty amazing. Yeah. Something I wanted to get into was with you, because I think obviously you're an expert in this from two angles, is money consciousness. It's definitely something I, I would like to get mm -hmm. into today. But I, I, think I'm in, I think I might take a, just a detour real quick, because I thought of something that's very relevant to right now. And you, know, you had talked about being in this like PTSD after the Vegas shooting what that did in your mind and how it, it stopped you from wanting to come to America, right? You didn't want to travel, right? And I'm just thinking about like right now, what's going on in the world with yeah. you know, COVID-19 mm -hmm. here in Minneapolis, obviously the George Floyd murder. Like there are people who are just frozen and maybe it's going to be three months, six months from now, that's mm -hmm. going to be that PTSD, like kind of thing. Like, do I go in a store? Do I go to a gym? Do I, right? Somebody sneezes and I, I'm like freaking out because somebody sneezed near me. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, I thought maybe if you could speak to that from your point of view of having done with this PTSD like experience, but then also obviously with your experience as a coach and, and mindset and brain change. Yeah, I think it's a really good analogy, right? Because what I came to understand is that through some experiences that we have, we create stories and the story isn't necessarily real. We've created this story as a, a way to find some safety in a situation. And then we kind of like perpetuate the story by living in it. And it becomes very, very real mm -hmm. for us. Like, for example, with me, it became very real that it was very dangerous in the United States. I remember even arriving in Phoenix and getting an Uber to the hotel and the first truck, like the first car in front of us was a truck and it had a Confederate flag on it and it had like, you know, those little family stickers, Yeah. Mm -hmm. but yeah. they were guns. So it was like the big like rifle gun and the, yeah. you know, and, and I was just like, Oh and my God. Literally, like, how does that show up in your world? Right? right. It's the first thing I see. So what I had to do was like do my own work, right? And understand that our reticular activating system is really open to that particular thing. And so that's the lens that we are experiencing everything through. And so even when I, you know, before I went, I, you know, I would be like at home and say my husband would have the news on and I would only hear the gun news or the, right. the shooting thing or like the crime. I wouldn't hear anything else. Now there's, you know, they do slant news a certain way, but that was all my brain was open to seeing mm -hmm. was that. Mm -hmm. And understanding that was a pivotal for me to understand the power of our brain and how I could actually change my experience by changing what I wanted to see, right? Which I later learned was like making a new decision. How do I want to experience life? And through making that decision, we then see different things. It's like we have different glasses on mm -hmm. and we experience a completely different situation. Even now, you know, I joke and I say, you know, my friend COVID or our friendly, you know, virus COVID, because I refuse to even talk about or acknowledge that there's any kind of hostility in this. I live in a friendly universe where everything is happening for me, even when I may not prefer it, right? right. And that's not being delusional. That's choosing intentionally what our experience is going to be. Because we have the capacity to experience both sides. We might have had this conversation with you the other day. We know, I know we had it with Jen, our friend Jen, the other day. And it was this conversation of like, I know the three of us and people we work with and talk to, mm -hmm. we, we're experiencing this situation very differently than a lot of other people are experiencing it. Mm -hmm. um, and she was, Jen was dis discussing specifically with, um, with you know, some family illnesses, right? And I'm experiencing it this way though. But then it's like, then I start feeling, should I feel guilty because I don't, I'm not having a terrible time and other people are right. This weird conversation of like all of a sudden, like 
well, I, I choose to experience it this way. I choose to believe that we live in a friendly universe. Life's always working for me. So then this must be for my greater good, even if I can't see it. And that's how I choose to experience this, which is why things are actually going pretty well during the situation where it's going pretty shitty for other people. But then there's all of a sudden, like Gemma's saying, like, but then all of a sudden I start feeling guilty that I don't, I'm not having a bad experience like other people. Mm-hmm. It's, it's amazing how the brain, yeah. right, and how what we choose to think affects everything. Yeah, because some people will call it like, like I remember somebody saying to me, like, you're delusional. Like, this is actually a real thing that's happening and people are dying and whatever, right? And it's like, I can understand that that's your experience, but that's not my experience. So if we are feeling any kind of guilt or a possibility that somehow we're thinking of ourselves as superior to others... Like, oh, I have a better mindset than you. So I'm higher elevated (laughs) in my (laughs) vibration or whatever, right? To remember that at all times, it's up to us what we decide. And at any point, we can make a new decision at any point. And so to look at like, where does that guilt come from? And undercover that limiting belief. Peel the onion back. Totally. Because the other thing is that if it's showing up in that place, it's probably showing up somewhere else and to look at where else are we, is this coming, like coming to the surface? Yep. Yeah. No, no, that was good. So this would be a good transition too. Cause I mean, again, it's it's so much, it's so much mindset, which I think is so cool about your business from accounting and bookkeeping. It's like, okay, let's talk about money consciousness here for a second. Right. Because I mean, it's a big issue. Talk about a charged issue, right? Mm -hmm. Because there's, is there guilt for having more money? And I, you know, know, is there guilt for, is, is there, this feeling bad for having more money or like this, every time I get money, I somehow manage to lose it. Every time I get ahead, I break even. Like there's just so many conversations around money. It's a decision as I'm sure you'll allude to, but just your thoughts around and your experience around money consciousness, working with your clients in in accounting, bookkeeping, working with your clients as entrepreneurs and even yourself. I feel like I have a a pretty good relationship with money now and a pretty good money consciousness now. I didn't always. So I grew up in a family of commercial fishermen. I'm on the West Coast of Canada. So my dad and my brothers were hardworking commercial fishermen. They physically had to work hard and sacrifice to make money. Now, it's also a feast or famine kind of thing, right? Like in fishing season, we had tons of money and then we did not. Right. <laughs> right. And so that's, that was the experience that I had growing up. And, you know, my dad was adamant that I would not work hard for money. But because I had kind of ingested that belief, because that's what I experienced and saw and had evidence for, even though numbers came easy to me and my career that I was in seemed super easy. I was kind of like, I get paid for this. Like, this seems crazy. I made it hard. So I actually experienced it as hard. So I worked long hours that I didn't have to work, right? I made things super complicated. I added complexity, right? So right? you can't see, I'm pointing at Janelle on the camera. And I'm like raising my hand, like speaking right. to my soul right now. This is the farm girl. This is the farm. Yeah. I'm the farm oh, yeah. girl. Farm girl. Same thing. Yeah. Same Anybody thing. who grew up in a farming mm-hmm. community yep. is going to have the yep. same thing, right? Absolutely. And so I experienced it as hard. I also created feast or famine cycles right? Mm -hmm. Which is crazy, right? Like you think about like being an employee, you get a paycheck every two weeks. There's no feast or famine cycle in that. I created them. Wow. That's fascinating. (laughs) And it wasn't until probably maybe eight years ago that I really saw my money story for what it was. Because I could, when looking back, I could see the cycle that I had developed. And I really got clear, like even in creating my own business, I made it so much harder than it needed to be. It's not that complex, right? Right. And once I really kind of uncovered the limiting beliefs there, things started to change. And it took some time. But I also came to understand that, and what I believe is that money flows to purpose, right? And so- I love this topic. Yeah, like when you're in your purpose and you are really showing up powerfully in service, 
and you're not focused on the dollars that, like it of course you have to receive money it's the world we live in right but mm -hmm. you're not like focused on i've got to you know increase my price get another client like that's not what's driving you the being in service and staying true to your purpose and what feels good to you right like what you feel so passionate about and what really is bringing you that joy fulfilling mm -hmm. even when somebody's telling you you should kind of do this and you kind of go off track a little bit and it doesn't feel so great yeah. and then it becomes hard right and then you're like hang on i gotta go back <laughs> right start coaching session the other day <laughs> yeah and from being in that purpose like the money will come and it right. sounds i don't know magical or woo woo or whatever but that's just what happens mm, right yeah. and at the same time i believe that you have to be a good steward of your money right so you're not ignoring it you're keeping good financial records like there's smart debt and not smart debt right and so you're always looking at that and like you're you're playing a role like like some people they come to alchemy and they're like oh, i just want you to do it all it's like, well, we can do that, right? We can become your accounting department, but I want you still to understand that you play a role here, mm -hmm. right? You still need to know the money that's coming into your business and going out and the profitability, right? And then alongside, it's like, is this what you feel called to do? It's like that funny question, if you won the lottery, would you still do this? Yep. Mm -hmm. If I won the lottery, I would still coach people. I'd be like free coaching for everyone <laughs> right but it's a powerful question that i think is important to ask ourselves right yeah I've, I've done the lottery thing where it's like yeah the transformation club would be free but you'd earn your you'd earn your free membership and yeah. there's no free there's no free rides in terms of effort like you're going to do right. your part but you'll never pay a dollar right yeah. I, I, that, that's kind of a fantasy but it yeah. goes back to just like living in purpose and uh, you know, this is something like we, we had to talk about in our coaching session with you the other day, like as where the business is now compared to where it was. And obviously COVID-19 has had a huge impact on, on our business. I'm more excited than ever because I'm so in love with what we're doing right now and where we're going and where we're going with it. And that I know is going to like it has in the past. We're going to get to an even higher level because of it, because every time I've been truly in love with what I do, the money just flows. Right. You're like, I don't understand how this is working, but it's working. So <laughs> then I'm somebody who I'm like, well, but I need to make this harder because yes. it, it feels too easy. Yeah. And if it's not hard, then that wasn't the belief system that I adopted. I, yeah, I think because it's, it's not congruent. Right? right. And so your brain's always trying to make it congruent, like always yeah. trying to adjust to what you believe. That's and key right there. Right, because like your brain is, you, you grew up one way, and it's such an amazing example because like I mean, you're an employee, you're receiving the same paycheck every two weeks. How the hell do you have a feast or famine? And some people who aren't initiated would be like, well, you know, sometimes the water heater blows up, and sometimes no, like you created feast or famine because that's what your brain is tuned into. Yeah, and sometimes like when I look back to like my 20s, I created feast or famine by making it hard. So I made it hard. I overworked myself. I got to the point of burnout and then I would quit a job. Be like, I can't do this anymore. And I would like, I don't know, spend my time partying it up and then run out of money and then got to go get another job. Right. Right. And then work you, myself. And you're doing something hard. you don't like working yourself to death. Yeah. Totally. So that's right? not a way to create that cycle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's, oh, it's like your brain it's just so cunning and it's so good at hiding fear through logic and reason. Yes. This was, yeah. This yeah. Can you really talk more good. on that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, it, like I always think like, Oh God, is this actually? So sometimes when I'm talking and coaching clients and they, I almost buy in to their limiting belief because it sounds so reasonable. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And it seems to be based in logic. And it's like, huh, well, that sounds pretty reasonable. I think, you know, like you're busy and you have all this stuff to do. There's no like you don't have time to do this right now. And you're going to you're going to do this next quarter, whatever. But it's what I've come to know is that our brain hides 
fear in logic and reason. And it is so good at creating the complexity because it doesn't, it, its whole purpose, besides keeping your body alive, which is survival, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. It's whole pr- to keep you where you're at because it's safe right here. Mm -hmm. right and so we don't want to move from here even if where we are right now isn't totally what we want there might be danger on the other side well it's the ego too the ego is taking over right yeah Yeah. it could be it could be way better but it could be dangerous too so you know what this isn't the best situation but at least i know i'm safe yeah or at least i know how to deal with it i know how to deal with it Mm -hmm. right it's like you know somebody who's in an abusive relationship they know how to deal with that situation and leaving that situation. There's a whole other world of fear that their brain and especially in that trauma state, their brain can't even get there. Selfishly. I love these because I can just sit back and take this all in and create my own notes. So I'd like to know what your notes are. I mean, well, let's, I, let's, I mean, let's, I, let's share with the listeners. What do you, what well, do you, what I wrote you money flows to purpose, which it's not like I haven't heard these things before, but yeah. I was like, Oh, it's really good. And then if you win the lottery, would you still yeah. be doing what you're doing and asking yourself? That I don't want to, I don't want to brush over this one though. Uh, and I, and I know you do a really good job talking about this, Michelle, can you explain money flows to purpose? Cause when we use that statement, but not everybody listening, we've, we have not talked about that on this show for sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So when we think of money, we know that, well, it's called currency, it's energy. I always think it's interesting that when we look into the origins of mindset, the very foundation belief around mindset and, you know, around like physics is that thoughts turn into things, Mm -hmm. right? Everything we have in our life was once a thought Mm -hmm. and it's now a thing. Right. And so when we look at our lives and we look at the things that we have in our lives, the people we have, the things we have, the money in our bank account, they are an expression. They're a physical expression of our thoughts. And so we need to understand that when we are denying our purpose, we are in a primal state. We're, we're not in a powerful state when we are not truly like leaning into our purpose. It's an interesting subject because it's like, how are you not in your purpose? Like you're a human being, you're on the planet. You, I don't believe you can not be in your purpose in, in mm-hmm. some form, right? Because that's what you're here for. However, what gets in the way are our limiting beliefs from truly stepping into the full power of our purpose because we're scared. The limiting beliefs that we've created about being visible, about speaking our truth, about judgment, rejection, those limiting beliefs keep us from truly saying, this is who I am and this is what I do. And when we're willing to do that, there is no shortage of money. The corresponding nature of life, the ability for life or intelligence, source, universe, God, whatever you want to call it, has a ability to, to respond to the thoughts that you are putting out there. And that response will provide you with the support that you need to achieve your purpose. That's what you're here for. And so I always think it's interesting because people are like, well, I need to find my purpose. I love that. Like, and just, yes. <laughs> right? And it's like, mm, no, actually what you need to do is sweep away those limiting beliefs and really lean into what you feel passionate about. It's not like finding a thing. You don't have anything to find. You just have to have maybe some courage to look at it, to be coachable, and to be willing to uh, like be in inquiry around mm-hmm. anything that really is keeping you where you're at and lean into that. And then the piece that I always think about, right, is like when you're doing that, it feels like, I don't know, like magic, right? Mm-hmm. Like you think of like somebody like Elon Musk. I watched an interview with Elon Musk a couple of weeks ago, and he was saying how you know, he spends two days at SpaceX, and then he flies over to Tesla, and he spends two days there, and then he goes somewhere else for a day, and he does this circuit, right? And 
the interviewer was saying like, isn't that stressful? And he's like, I love what I do. So absolutely not. It is not stressful. It's the best thing in the world. And the interesting thing is, is like, I don't know, he's not the CEO. He's like, I am in the engineering department. I'm working with the engineers. I don't know how to run a business. Mm -hmm. (laughs) They hire people to do that because he understands his purpose. Right. And it's not about the ego of being at the CEO. Like he truly understands the place that I feel the most powerful is actually in like working with the engineers and in the creation. And so that's what he does. And so money seems to come out of nowhere for him. It's so interesting. I was talking to a client the other day and he was saying how his nephew works in venture capital and He's always had a desire to like develop platforms and stuff like that, kind of like mind body, right? And in the COVID situation, he realized that, you know, it's a perfect opportunity to develop a more robust platform for boutique like Pilates studios, yoga studios, where you can do online classes and process payments and schedule things, all this, all this stuff, right? And so he shared that with somebody. He feels really passionate about that, like, like the development of the software. He shared that with somebody. They told his boss. They had a conversation, and they're, like, they're in the VC world. They gave him $1.5 million to develop this app. Wow. <laughs> Whoa. That's amazing. Out of nowhere. Yeah. Right? The client I was talking to, he, he was like, how do I do that? I want to do that. <laughs> right? <laughs> and I'm like, it's understanding and being so willing to know and trust your purpose and evolve with it. Cause sometimes people think it's one thing and it evolves into something else. Yeah. That's a big one for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And you have to give money a reason to flow. I remember David talking about yeah. you know, some kid coming up to him and saying, you know, I want to be a billionaire. He's like, well, you better have a billion dollar reason for money to flow to you. Right. <laughs> yeah. Like, what are you going to do? What's your contribution? When I think about the moments that the most amount of money flowed into my life were moments where I said, I'm going to do this thing and this is how it's going to affect the world. And that thing, like I might not be David Bear affecting million people or whatever, but it is affecting the people that I need to reach. One of the things that I stand for is that women need to get their money story straightened out. They need to clean up their finances And they need to get in integrity with money and understand that it has a, it wants to go to them, it wants to flow to them, and it wants to support them. Because if women are going to rise into a different energy where they're more, they have more control, more say in how our earth system and our communities evolve, they have to have money right? And up until now, they haven't, because at some point, money was taken away from them. And so, uh, so many women carry this genetic hereditary money story Mm -hmm. along with them, right? Like a lead backpack, Mm -hmm. and they keep perpetuating it, right? Whereas if they were to put that down, and I'm not like one of those like, staunch feminist people, but I do believe that divine masculine and divine feminine energy together Mm-hmm. is what will change our world. For sure. But women have a ways to go to understand that they are just as worthy. Like not a lot of men, there's some men, not a lot of men have an issue with earning money. <laughs> so <Right>? true. <laughs> women do. So it's something for them. That's what I believe, right? And so it's my purpose. Of course, I am divinely supported in that, right? Because yep. it's like the weirdest things happen. So do you have anything else? Otherwise, I would love, Michelle, if you could just give some like, we always like to give some practical things that people can take away from this that are listening. So when we look at money consciousness, we look at those stories, most people don't even know that they have those stories. They just see like, this has always been a struggle. Money is hard to make. We're not the Rockefellers, you know, like, and, and they may not even be conscious of some of those thoughts that they're having. So what are some kind of practical applications or some things that you would tell people to do that are listening around that? It is really important just to, like, you don't need to hire anybody 
to fix your money story kind of thing, right? All you need to do is spend some quiet time listening to your thoughts. So when you think about money, what, what do you think? Just write it down on a piece of paper. Oh my, it's hard to make. There's never enough. Like all of these things are your limiting beliefs. And at the very basis of this, just understand that you can make a new decision at any time. And it can, at the very beginning, it can be just the opposite. That'll get you started, right? Mm-hmm. So if it's money is hard to make, money flows to me easily, right? And then if you're willing to sit with this, it will evolve. It's important to remember that you don't have to like dig around into all the stuff that happened in your life and <laughs> relive all the trauma and all that kind of stuff. Like you can do that, sure, but you don't have to do that. Because at the end of the day, whether you choose to make a new decision now or three months from now, you're still going to need to make a new decision about it. Yep. Right? So why not make it now and just decide, you know what? I want things to change. And then you can begin to like reprogram your brain. I'm sure, Justin, you talk about using a decision matrix. The piece around a decision matrix, so you're taking the old belief, you make a new decision, and then you find some evidence to support that new decision. And the the piece that is so important in this is the evidence. It's to find even the smallest amount of evidence because that process is the part that opens up your reticular activating system. And so you start to see more and more of that. And the more evidence you have, the more your brain goes, oh, this is real, (laughs) right? Mm -hmm. This is a real thing. Oh, okay, I can get on board with this. It's not hard to make. It's actually easy. And then as you start to evolve, right, your belief system, then your decisions become maybe more complex or, you know, you get into, you can get into further work. Yeah, and by the way, reticular activating system, uh, for those who are listening, we covered that on episode 67. We dedicated a whole episode to it. And I know Michelle's referenced it a couple of times because it is so important. It's Justin's favorite thing to it's talk like about. And say. Part, it's like the coolest part of the brain. <laughs> right? I know. I love it. I'm just like, it's the best thing ever. Okay. So, I mean, we obviously covered a lot here, you know, and we get into a lot of mindset stuff. I knew we were going to get in that direction. It was fun to hear some of the story. I, I think people may want to listen back, especially if you're suffering right now in the COVID situation, or maybe just in, you might be listening to this a year or two from now and hopefully it's all over with, and maybe it's a money conscious situation. And that kind of the, what you talked about with the PTSD story from the shooting and how the brain mm-hmm looks for everything to be wrong. I mean, there's, there's so many nuggets in this episode. It's like one that you got to go back and listen to again, for sure. But for those who want to, you know, learn more about you, whether it's, you know, follow, you do videos on Facebook. Now you've got your accounting business. Obviously you do mindset coaching, David Bayer. So how do people discover you? My company's website is alchemyaccounting.ca. And we support mission driven entrepreneurs throughout North America. So they can check us out on there. You could follow me or friend me even on Facebook, um, Michelle Cooper, and on Instagram, Michelle B. Cooper. And yeah, I'm really approachable. Very cool. Reach out. And of course, we can connect you as well. If anybody wants to reach out directly to us, we can do a direct connection as well. Yeah. yeah thank you so much. This was wonderful. Yeah, this was awesome. I'm so glad we were we did this. We we need to that this will expand our belief of we are able to get on this podcast. So yeah. that is phenomenal. Yeah. As well. So you'll be the catalyst to more superstars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, absolutely. Well, because, you know, you know, I have this, right. As I'm, I'm showing this on the screen, but you know, I have this business decision and one of the statements is around our, is around our podcast. I see us sharing valuable lessons and interviewing game changing guests on our top ranked podcasts. So that's one of the things I'm, you know, programming the mind with on a daily basis around the various segments of our business. So yeah, it's awesome. And the catalyst. yeah, I will. I think what you're doing is so important in the world and, and you each have such an amazing gift and your mission in the world is like awesome. I'm all on board of that. And I just want to encourage you to just show up even more powerfully, like shine even brightly because nothing is out of reach for you guys. Let go of those limiting beliefs. That's right. Well, thank you very much. We'll yeah, continue. We'll continue you. to work through them with you on a regular basis. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then, and we'll uh, we'll see you in a couple of weeks on a two day Zoom adventure. I know, right? That'll be good.
Yeah, yeah. So that'll be fun. Well, thanks so much. We really, really, truly appreciate it. We're so grateful that you're here yes. and we're so grateful that you're in our life. Yeah, thank you. I'm grateful for you guys too. Hey, thanks so much for listening. Yeah, we really appreciate you spending your time with us. On that note, if you feel good about the time you spent with us, we'd love for you to give us a review. A review will help get the Transformation Show noticed, which could help to transforming more lives. So in a way, you can help transform someone else's life by posting a review. That's pretty awesome. That is awesome. Also, if you want to get notified of each episode release, be sure to subscribe. That way, the Transformation Show ends up in your podcast app and you always have easy access. One final thing. We'd love to connect with you outside of the Transformation Show. You can find both of us on Facebook and Instagram. And you can subscribe to our newsletter at thetransformationshow.fitness, where you can also find more episodes and show notes. Thanks so much for joining us. Have faith. And take action. Take action.